Hello and welcome back to the Rope Access and Climbing Podcast. I'm your host, Mikey Stevenson, and today I'm going to be talking to you about different industries. We're bringing different industries into rope access. Hmm. Anyways, if this is your first time here, please make sure to subscribe and follow us wherever you get your podcasts. So stay tuned. Step into your harness and get ready for a podcast about the vertical world. All right. Well, thank you everyone for tuning into today's episode. Um, Today, I just want to talk about something that's been kind of not necessarily troubling me, but I've been, I guess, questioning this myself uh, over the last few months. Um, Something that I encountered, and I guess I encounter it pretty frequently, just don't really think about it. Um, is that no matter what industry you're in, there is gear that is specifically designed for that industry. Um, however, I find that many industries get bottlenecked with that gear and they don't really adventure or explore outwards to see if another industry would create something that would make their specific task easier or safer. Um, This is something that I've been encountering pretty frequently uh, recently. And realistically, at the end of the day, what I, when I was speaking to another gentleman about this was you don't know what you don't know. And if you don't have exposure to those other industries or that other equipment, it's really hard to think about bringing something in to potentially make your job safer or easier. For instance, um, what I've been doing is with these cold temperatures, there's been a lot of ice formation uh, working around this oil and gas site that I'm working at. The ice formations threaten either personnel or they threaten equipment that could potentially, you know, create a catastrophic, you know, upset uh, of the refinery or the plant, whatever you're working in. As we know, um, the bigger the piece of ice, the heavier it is. And one cubic meter of ice is uh, is one ton of ice. So it doesn't take a lot to build up a lot of mass of ice. Now, that's in a perfect world. One cubic meter is perfect ice where it's you know basically well consolidated. Where I'm working, not necessarily is it perfectly formed and not is it completely um, consolidated. So, you know, it varies. However, the concept that I'm bringing up here is why are we not looking at tools like ice climbing equipment to better serve us with this ice removal um, process? Now, Yes, obviously you can grab a hammer, you can grab a hammer drill and chip away at it. You can grab nets to basically protect the equipment below. But <clears throat> there's also things that you can do to take it in a more controlled fashion. So by putting a hole through the ice, you have the ability to basically confine it to where you want it to go. Um, you know, I, I've seen it where people wrap ropes around it and then it just doesn't go where they want it. And rightly so. It's You have nothing physically restraining it from going somewhere. Um, I've encountered many pieces of ice here that have forced us to kind of think outside the box. And that's obviously a good thing. We don't have necessarily perfect drops straight to the ground where it's open space and If it lets go accidentally, um, no harm, no foul. Unfortunately, when we're dealing with high risk uh, activities like this, if this this structure does let go, it could cause a catastrophic upset. So by this and by virtue of the task at hand, we have to be thoughtful and understand how can we better protect the equipment. Now, obviously, this is an example based on my personal experience. Um, And moving forward, moving onwards, 
we have to look at it from different industries. We talk about the fire industry, um, the technical rope side of things, and how they're stuck in 200 years of tradition. And they're, you know, for the most part, scared of change. But if you take what the technical rope rescue course teaches you and implement rope access techniques, you would have a phenomenal course um, if you were able to join both of those skill sets together. Now, unfortunately, here where I live, those are two totally different disciplines and two totally different methods and concepts. But in other parts of the world, they have started to mold these together. So, you know, like, you know, like I've spoke about here on my platform before about um, cross training. So have technical rope rescue people trained in rope access and have rope access people trained in technical rescue. Um, and then at the end of the day, you're just creating a better, more comfortable, more competent uh, individual. A lot of the skills and a lot of the tools that you learn in the fire rescue can be transferred over to the rope access side of things. A lot of the tools that are used on the rope access side can also virtually be utilized on the technical rope rescue side or, or like trench rescue or, you know, those sort of things. Anywhere that you're using a rope based concept. But then we'll also you know, those are the primary areas. But then we talk about the arborist industry and the climbers that are up in the trees. There's a lot of technicians up in the trees working with very basic equipment, but are extremely fluent in their methods. But then you can take that same person, give them a, you know, a device that's specifically designed for them and they're going to just be that much better and they're be more efficient. But could we take the equipment or the skills from Arborist and bring it into technical rope or rope access? Absolutely. Um, as a rope access technician, I know absolutely nothing about climbing trees in the Arborist industry. I think it's absolutely fascinating. And, you know, after my interview that I had this last week with Kristen, um, it was really interesting to have the ability to sit down with her and talk about that industry. Now, I do plan on reaching out to many more arborists and understanding their concepts and what their or tips and tricks are, but for right now, this is what I have. Now, can we take the arborist industry and mold that into the climbing industry, rock climbing, ice climbing? Yes, there's absolutely a lot of equipment that's transferable. We deal with, in those industries, less governance um, of equipment. Now, is that a good thing or a bad thing? Yeah, I'll leave that up to you. But if we have the ability to use stuff in both fire and rope access and, and in, intermingle them together, our technicians are going to be better. Now... You know, I've taken some background and understanding from my my background of climbing and introduced it into rope access. This is one made me a better climber um, because, you know, I'm already comfortable in a harness. I'm already comfortable at heights. I'm already familiar with equipment. However, the problem that we've ran into with this and myself personally, and if you've paid attention to my platform, you've heard me talk about this. It's also caused me an issue coming up through the levels that I'm extremely comfortable and confident in my abilities. And people take those little attributes as being cocky or whatever they want to say today. Um, unfortunately, obviously, we understand that we can't make everybody like us we can't like make everybody you know accept what we have to say we all have differences of opinion and differences of experience but at the end of the day we're trying to come to a common goal now 
what that goal is that will differ based on where you're working, what you're doing, who your crew is, and, you know, your end all be all goal. But everybody within that can, that, that team is trying to achieve that thing. Now, if you're an arborist, your goal at that end of, at the end of the day is to prune that tree nicely, be, do it safely, or remove the tree in a safe, controlled fashion so you don't have any property damage um, and nobody gets hurt. Fire rescue, technical rescue. Obviously, if you're getting called in from that side, you're already dealing with somebody at their worst. And your goal and your team's goal is to remove them from that situation. So you have to be your best when they're at their worst. Now on the rope access side of things, we're trying to take a common task, access it in an uncommon way, try to achieve it in the most cost-effective, safest means possible, and ultimately be prepared for a bad situation. Now, we wish and pray that nothing happens, but going back to the fire service side of things, we understand that things could happen. And being prepared is always the number one goal here. Do it safely, make sure you have a rescue plan, make sure that you have the understanding of your task. And at the end of the day, make sure that everybody that's on your crew is trained in the equipment that you're going to deploy for that task. So in conclusion, what are we talking about here today? Well, I've kind of covered a bunch of different things. Talking about introducing equipment from other industries into your industry. This can be beneficial. Now, Sometimes there's more logistics that have to go into that. You can't just, you know, pick and choose and throw it in there and it's all good. There's policies and procedures sometimes that you have to follow. But just because you're in one industry doesn't mean that you can't take information or equipment from another industry and introduce it into yours to make it better or safer. Then on the flip side of that, talking about other climbing industries here, about how having cross training from one industry to another or being able to intermingle them together will only benefit us. Ultimately, let's be honest, we're all kind of nerds in a different way. We all kind of like these rope things. That's why we're here. That's why you're listening to this podcast. Let's work together. Let's start removing this divide between industries and start working together, training with one another so we all go home safely and we're better, competent, safer individuals at the end of the day. All right. So anyways, that's all I have for today. Thank you very much for tuning into today's episode. If you like it and you're watching this on YouTube, make sure to hit the like button. It certainly helps my platform here. Uh, Comment down below. Let me know what you thought and, you know, what other kind of topics would you like me to kind of discuss here on my platform? If you haven't already, make sure to uh, follow me on Instagram. That's where you get the most up-to-date information. There is a link in the description below. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel down here in the bottom right-hand corner. Hit the bell for notifications as I put out new content every Sunday. And, well, until next time.